Tackle today, the Justice Brothers from Tackle Trading bring you all the charts, the news, the analysis, so you can be informed in just a few minutes on your entire trading day. Matt, you are my brother. You're also my AI guy, uh, and you have an upcoming AI event. What's that all about? Yeah, Tackle Trading, uh, Tackle Trading and Legacy uh, Club is partnered to put on some amazing webinars every single month from an educational perspective. A lot of different topics, so definitely check out legacy.club slash Matt Justice. Um, it, uh, the link is also in the description as well. But on October 16th, next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when I'm teaching the AI Gold Rush. Come join us. Not only to learn about AI, not only to learn about how to trade and invest in AI stocks, not only to learn about how to identify the best ones, but you also get access to my amazing tiered AI Gold Rush watch list as well. Uh, so uh, definitely uh, looking forward to that. Come join. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, listen, uh, there's going to be a lot of momentum. Oh, by the way, it's for free. Oh, All right. there, there you go. A lot of momentum, a lot of excitement in that webinar coming up. Uh, not been a lot of excitement the last three weeks in the S&P 500. It's very rare in uh, you know recent years to trade this long in a consolidation pattern, particularly after a breakout, but that's where we're at. Feels like we're ready to break out. It's a very clean level, Matt. Break it down for us. Yeah, it, it definitely feels like it uh, wants to break out here. And it's it does seem to be waiting on something because you're absolutely right. Technically, following a multiple time frame breakout, it's not every day you see a three-week consolidation, very clean, benign, no volatility type of environment. But the, here we are. And it's not that we haven't had to deal with a lot of different news stories over the last three weeks. But the market's just just digesting it. And now we're talking about a pretty clean channel right around that 574, 575 level. And that's exactly where we're at. S&P looks like it wants to break out. Q's looks like it wants to co uh, continue its little uh, uh, outperformance uh, we've seen over the last uh, few uh, trading sessions. But at the end of the day, market looks pretty clean going into uh, CPI report tomorrow on a potential breakout and then earnings on Friday. And that's the last thing I'll say uh, on the market index here is there are certain things that the market is waiting on here. And, and whether it's, you know, to see the hurricane damage that's obviously happening in Florida and, and thoughts and prayers for everybody in Florida, or whether it's earnings kick uh, kickstart on Friday, or whether it's the Iranian Israeli situation, there is some degree of hesitation, but it looks like the market is starting to get a little bit more confident as it's going into that nice little breakout. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we'll talk about the CPI numbers uh, tomorrow. Not a lot of economic news today. Uh, Fed minutes come out later today. We've had a lot of Fed speakers uh, already speak this week, several more uh, coming up. Uh, basically, Matt, not a lot of new dialogue is uh, being added to the conversation. Hey, rate cuts are still coming. Economy is strong, but we're keeping an eye on labor. Inflation is improving but still remains a point of concern. Basically, some boilerplate <laughs> language coming out of the Fed this week. Yeah, I got nothing on the Fed this week. They're in talk mode. Yeah, talk, talk, talk. Getting paid to talk, too. Yeah, getting paid getting, to talk. In talk mode. Uh, listen, uh, individual stocks, there are some interesting ticker symbols you got for us today. Break yeah, them down. there's some interesting uh, ticker symbols. First and foremost, Boeing's in the news, Alphabet, Google, and then Chewy's in the news here today as well. Boeing's is in the news because they withdrew a pay raise offer to the 33,000 machinists that are have been on strike since mid-September, and that's costing Boeing over a billion dollars a month. S&P Global Ratings issued a, ne a negative outlook for Boeing's credit rating due to the ongoing strike. Boeing down a little bit here today. Google's also in the news from a from a negative perspective, I would say, as the Justice Department filed a uh, court filing on Tuesday that gave a federal court a range of options in a potential breakup of some of Google's search-related products, including Chrome and Android. Now, as a consumer, you wouldn't see much difference in those two. But as a company, that would impact Google quite a bit. It's not a guarantee, but they're obviously trying to go down that road. And then on Chewy, Chewy rose uh, a little bit here today as TD Cohen initiated a buy rating with an upside of potentially 25%. So let's take a look at these three stocks from a pure technical perspective. 
as you're looking at Boeing, you're talking about the market kissing up against an all-time high in a clean resistance test. Well, you kind of have that similar situation here at 150 as you are approaching earnings season. Pretty clean little trigger underneath that 150. That's a that's a bad look for Boeing on a bad stock with a bad news uh, situation going into a very very important earnings for uh, for Boeing itself. Now on Google. Obviously, this has been one of the reasons, if you'll recall last quarter, this was a little bit of a concern through the entire quarter last uh, over the last three to four months. You're seeing that play out here today as well. Google does have earnings coming up as well fairly soon. And then on Chewy, a little bit of a different conversation technically on Chewy, an improving condition gapped up above that 30 handle, which is a very important uh, resistance level for Chewy as well. And so a little bit of a gap up here above that 30 handle. We'll see if it can digest that 30 handle on the weekly chart. Looks pretty good on that weekly chart on a little bit of a recovery type opportunity coming out of Chewy. And at the end of the day, one thing I do know about America is they love their pets. They do love their pets. We love our pets. So we, love support, our pets. we so support that as well. Uh, commodities, uh, continuing a little bit of, uh, oh, what's the right word? Uh, you know, <laughs> messiness, uh, you know, across the space. Oil selling off the last couple of days has been very supportive for markets. Uh, but, uh, you know, a lot of the commodities, the Chinese news, uh, sliding oil, uh, you just got some messy charts right now. Yeah, you do have a little bit of messy charts right now, and the dollar is playing a role in a little bit of that messy charts. Uh, we were very, very impressed last week as a lot of these commodities held up against the dollar, but you're starting to work up a little bit more and a little bit more, and you also have that negative Chinese news that is obviously playing out a little bit this week. Now, is it is it a volatility shock or is it something more? We'll have to wait and see on that. At the end of the day, gold's just doing a little bit of a retracement. Nothing too uh, concerning here as you, we were looking at a, a breakout situation above 2,700. Now you're talking about a pullback. And when you talk about technical analysis, those are the two core patterns. You're talking about breakouts and you're talking about retracements. If something doesn't break out, the path of least resistance is down. That's a retracement. And so you're looking at a little bit of a standard pullback here on uh, on uh, gold uh, coming underneath that 20 period moving average. You do have some support levels at 2600. You also have a really, really important uh, support level right around that 50 period moving average on the daily chart as well. Silver obviously got gut punched yesterday with Chinese news. Now you're just going through a little bit of slowing momentum here. Uh, we talked about this and broke this down in great detail during the Traders Lounge uh, yesterday. Look at it as a as a volatility based pullback but a pullback nonetheless when you're looking at uh, when you're looking at copper copper also pulling back a little bit more very sensitive to the chinese economic data is is copper even a little bit more so than silver uh silver as well and so copper so, showing a little bit of a further pullback but again when china's in the news to the, to a positive copper is usually going to outperform the other the other metal classes when china's in the news on the negative side well, you get the opposite impact, and that's what we're seeing play out in copper a little bit. On crude oil, Mark, and one of the reasons you're probably seeing the market improve over the last uh, two days is we're seeing some reprieve on the crude oil side of the equation as as the the debate that has been happening between what is Israel going to do in its response again and retaliation against Iran, who had that 180, 190 ballistic missiles from last week. Well, the the, the deb ongoing debate is centered around, are they going to hit nuclear, uh, nuclear sites? Are they going to hit oil fields? Are they going to do something else? Well, the last couple of days, the conversation has been a little bit of the alleviation of the most extreme responses. And that's why you're seeing a little bit of pullback in oil, um, but a very volatile, very sensitive area of the market, no doubt. Yeah, listen, we're going to continue these conversations and markets uh, moving as we speak. Uh, break them all down. Look for those trade setups. Wednesday on the Traders Lounge, big chart day for us. Come join us, tackletrading.com. Sign up for that free trial today.